So we gonna introduce ourselves, or we all know yeah. each other. Yeah, I think we're all here. Let's get started. <clears throat> Let's just introduce who you guys are, and also obviously plug what you do. So I'm Sebastian. I run PVPDX. Right. Whoever's next, DeAndre, you wanna do your thing? Cool. Uh, my name is DeAndre, also known as DeAndre Dance. I am a smooth collective contributor. Uh, my day job is working at King Elementary, teaching classical ballet, classical modern, and jazz to our elementary schoolers in the uh, community. Uh, my role in Smooth Collective is community engagement. It is my um, my goal for the company is to constantly engage us in everything that is community outreach and make sure that we have a um, a strong presence in the community from an outreach perspective. Is Great. anyone here not wearing Smooth Collective gear? Because I am. <laughs> That's just a coincidence today. Yeah. So, Greg, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Greg. Um, I help do graphic design, make t-shirts with Smooth Collective. Y'all can hear me? JC Banco, producer. Um, trying to be a part of the team in any way. I just, I'll be making beats. That's it. Y'all know me pretty much. Y'all know me. What's up? Good Thank to see you. Solid bank of. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on, y'all? What's popping? Uh, y'all already know me, Keevan, K Smooth, uh, whatever y'all want to call me. Just know it, you can't call me the N word. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm a part of Smooth. Um, graphic designer is my specialty. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm here to talk. So. My name is Kim, and I'm a nanny. <laughs> and a photographer and a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, I, I do a lot of things. But right now I'm a nanny and I'm taking care of children. And I also do photography. And prayer and, warrior. And, yeah. Pretty. You are a prayer warrior. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah. that? Cool. Twix? Hi, right, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dope. All right. Um, Twix Williams. I'm a filmmaker, director, editor, located in Portland, Oregon. Good to have you, Twix. Yeah. My name is Kevante. Um, I go by Tay. But, um, yeah, I help run Smooth Collective. Um, I'm an artist myself. Pretty much do... A little bit of everything, kind of a renaissance man, not just playing. But uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me from North Portland. Tay, you got to do a little bit better than that. You don't help run Smooth. I mean, he obviously is a part of Smooth Collective, but he is president and CEO. Like, he, 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 is, he is Smooth Collective. Collective. So, I mean, just saying, just saying. Hey, man, like I said, I help, you know, um, <laughs> I, I help give it a, a heartbeat. That's all, you know, I'm a humble person. So I don't know about you guys, I'm exhausted. This whole couple of weeks has been like more than I think any of us, you know, are used to handling. I want to know like how you're feeling about it. Like, is it a, a, a widely positive thing? Is it something that, that, you, that gives you hope or is it something that you find to be uh, a difficult time? Like what's going on for you? Whoever wants to start, why don't you start DeAndre? Uh, today for my smooth brethren, uh, I wasn't in the studio, but I was kind of rehearsing, um, like, I guess, test videos for uh, Airways Media, you know, because I've been talking to the collective a lot about um, having a social media presence when it comes to social issues, just figuring out how to leverage our business so that we profit and that we don't we don't create a liability for ourselves but we're doing the right things when it comes to um, messaging and being a face for um you know, the black community and people of color in Portland, I think that what we're seeing, and I, uh, we try not to speak for each other on this one, but I do think that it's been an overwhelming amount of support from all angles. And it's kind of hard to digest. And the support is coming from them wanting to, uh, I guess, use us as a lens to promote a message because we're a black owned business. And we, we have just been kind of placed into this situation of activism. I don't think any of us woke up and was like, 
we need to fight for social issues. Like our focus is Smooth Collective and establishing Smooth Collective. And um, in that, we're trying to answer the call. I think as a collective, what I see with us is that we are staying focused on our on our goal as mm-hmm. a brand. In all of this, we haven't really, we individually probably would dial into the social issues per se. We understand the call to action and all we keep saying is, are we ready for the heat? And so that has kind of brought us together as a company. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about, I guess, the climate, I think we're still going through it, right? I think as for us as black men, it's important for us to be here for each other and to be a positive light for each other right now. Like we don't sit around and harbor on the bullshit that, excuse me, but the bullshit that white people mm-hmm. do. Like that's not the type of collective that we are. Through this time, we've established our core principles. We've created a code of conduct. Like we've really started to see America for what it is and then see us and how we want to reflect the, the world that we want to be in, you know? And so I think that might be a good icebreaker for people to jump off from. Mm-hmm. Um, You've been down, I've seen you down um, at the protest though. So you make it sound like you've just been in the lab, kicking, cooking up shirts and making business decisions, but you've been out there. I can explain that. I can explain that, really. Um, we all do our part. I'm in the community on all fronts, the nighttime, the daytime, the protests, the, mm-hmm. the legislative conversations. I think I've just been positioned that way. Mm-hmm. But specifically at the vigil, the only reason why I spoke was because nobody was saying anything. Right. It was not my intention to have that brief 15 minutes of people knowing who's this kid and why is what is he talking mm-hmm. about but like that wasn't my intention in all of this and i've been trying to accept that with the most amount of grace possible it only looks like i'm out there because it's very few black voices with substance out there saying something i've only been out there a couple of times and you know honestly Locally, I'm known as a, like a budding model. So people just do that. Like they take pictures of me and then next, you know, it's like I'm out here Martin Luther King in it. But it's not just me. Like they're doing it too, you well, know? Can- and I'm just, because I'm community engagement. It is my... It is my call to action to make sure that our voices are being protected yeah, and being yeah. filtered and our message, our message is coming across. But I'm not the only one doing, you know? Tay. Yes. How can, can you react to that bit? Because the truth is, there's a lot of white people out right now. A lot of white people. Like, is that, is that something that you think of as a, is it like a trend? Do you think there's real heart change going on? Like, how does it feel as a, as a black man right now? You know, as DeAndre said, like, he was there. No one was saying anything. Probably no one said, like, they felt like they could say anything. Um, I think DeAndre in his speech kind of spoke on it, like, um, us as black people, it's not only our fight. Um, like we constantly have been fighting for these, you know, for us to have an equal stance, you know, and um, just to to find justice in, in certain, you know, aspects of life. And like, I just feel like um, what's going on is, I think white people are fed up too. Mm. Like honestly, um, and like I said, I just feel like it's not only our our fight. And we just kind of seeing how white Portland is like, you know, like during these protests, like you know, that is the majority out here in Portland, you know, it's a very, very white place. So I'm not really surprised when I see like the protests um, being that way. But I do feel like we could have black voices more uplifted. And I think those do happen like, when you know, there's a pioneer squares and stuff like that. When we went to protest a couple of times, there was definitely times where there's good stories, you know, that we've heard from the community. But um, I think we could do a little better job of uplifting the, the voices out here and kind of like speaking on like how gentrification kind of plays a factor here in Portland, too. Mm. I, one thing that's been uh, strange to me is like I've been driving around the neighborhoods and there's just been random people, like just one person, like out by the side of the street with a sign just standing there for hours. Um, to, to me, I've, I've been part of a lot of kind of like motivated groups of people, you know, Occupy, all that sort of thing. But this feels like everyone, even on, just on an individual level, like people are, are just like desperate to do something. I mean, we obviously know the tipping point, but how much do you think is, 
is to do with where we are economically or where we are kind of like socially because we're all distanced from each other. Do you think that this was um, an opportune moment, so to speak, to have something like this kick off? Um, yeah, I mean, um, during the coronavirus, what have, I mean, people have been, been at home, you know? Yeah. Not really being able to work and, you know, like be a part of the normal life. So I feel like, you know, during this time, it's just kind of a new normal is like being birthed. You know, I feel like a lot of people aren't like accepting of that, but there's plenty and plenty and plenty of people that's been out on these streets and, and coming together to where they are accepting the new normal. And like, I feel like there is like some hope, some change being happened, you know, for sure. It's comforting to, for me to hear you say that because I, I find um, in the last 10 years of this struggle, like how little actually has changed in actual like what goes on in the streets between cops and black people, like pretty much nothing's changed. In fact, all the attention that we've had over the last 10 years, like this still seems to be exactly the same problem. And I know that there's a bigger reaction now, but I've been struggling to have hope that actually something's going to change. So what's the source? If you, is anyone feeling hopeful? What, and what's the source of that hope? JC, you want to speak to that? Uh, I, I do, I do see some change because like I was explaining earlier, like with this time, I feel like it's been brought to a lot of people. It's been hard to ignore. It's brought up uh, to a lot of people to their attention. What really goes on of like uh, a lot of people out here like to pretend everything's all good or, you know, I guess in their life, you know, they never had to witness some of these things. So, they, you know, everything's all peachy. And uh, I used to kind of like resent people that felt like that way. Like I used to, you know, be negative towards people like that, that, you know, would walk around smiling all day and stuff. And so uh, I was going with it is that like, I see things are different because now uh, it's a lot of people are aware of what's going on and you can't, you can't be all, you know, every, like everything's all perfect. When you see like, you know, people don't, understand why me and some of the people you know I, I got love for like you know why we are in the situations we're in or choose to do the certain things that you know we shouldn't be doing uh and and why we have some of this anger and other things built up and i, I feel like now some people are at least trying to understand uh even some of the you know more of the uh the types that you know the racist types or whatever that at least like there's some dialogue being made now to where they're trying to understand why people are so upset and why they feel the way they do and why they would rather see things, you know, burn or this or that. Cause that's the initial uh, emotion was anger and they didn't understand why people were doing that. But I see now that people are at least trying to understand. So that's what I, that's what I picked up. Off of. I can see you nodding, Kevin. What's the situation with you? Are you feeling hopeful? I mean, I see a lot of change. I see, a, <clears throat> like, I see a lot. I see, like, even the kids are out of place. Like, our our next generation, they're 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 seeing this and they're taking part in this too. So, like, there's there's a lot of eyes being opened right now at an early age. So, a big shift is happening right now to where, <clears throat> like, like JC was saying, you can't you can't run away from it. You, we're stuck in we're stuck with ourselves to the point we have to see what's going on going on around us. So it's like a lot of people are aware and a lot of people have to have these awkward conversations, have to have these conversations that you're walking away from. So it's like we're, we're coming to a place where we're, we're becoming uncomfortably comfortable. So that's a good thing. Do you think the um, awareness has been raised generally? Do you think it's just the white community who are realizing this, or do you think there's other people of color? I mean, maybe Kim can. Uh, there's, well, there's people of color too that that's been in the dark too, like that. I, like there's people I know that are in the dark, you know. And it's like everyone. It's like everyone's light bulb is, has it has to be cut on. Like you know, everyone yeah. has to be. Uh, everyone's a part of this conversation now, so it's like you have to be vigilant. You have to be. You have to have something. Some input, some, 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 something to give. Like, in right. But at a, you know, at a point, like, because there's people that have been awake to this, you know, forever. Like, and at a point, I got to even a point, you know, like, 
sort of the end of last year to the you know, around the beginning of this this year and even like recently where it was like I don't want to talk no more. I don't even want to like my eyes are so open to some of these things that I don't even want to explain why why like I feel this way. I don't even want to try to. But I'm to trying to be more that's how more loving and more, you know, try to uh be more hopeful, like you were saying, but like there's there's times where I had no hope and it's like, you know, like who gives a damn? So like if this is what it is, then this is what it is. And I'm I'm this is what it is gonna be. But like I said, I have seen some some different types of uh things going on that I'm trying to pull some hope from. Kim, what's this been like in, in uh, your family and your home? Has it been a lot of discussion about are these new ideas from where you are? Yeah, so a little bit of my story is uh, I came here at the age of three from Guatemala and my family uh, immigrated here. And so we we're illegal immigrants growing up. And can you hear me? Yes? Okay. Um, yeah, so growing up, being an illegal immigrant, it was something that you didn't want to talk about. You just, you, you were really forced to assimilate into the culture as best as you could. And, and I did, I, I like, and I grew up in Tigard and it's predominantly white people there. And I think this whole movement has showed me a lot about myself as well of, of how a lot of us, like people of color and, you know, Black people, like they, they experience these injustices from the systematic racism that exists in this country. And, but a lot of us don't like, like, I didn't know what to say, you know, like, I don't know how to stand up for myself. I don't know how to like advocate for myself. I, I see it as there's no really hope. Like it is what it is and you can't really fight it. You can't there's do much about it. And especially like knowing my parents and their circumstances, like, it's growing up it was out of fear that you couldn't like tell people your story because you were going to be deported and it wasn't until i graduated high school when i became a DACA recipient which means i got a work author i got a work authorization permit that allows me to legally be here for work but it doesn't mean i'm a citizen and i don't get no stimulus check when when there's a lockdown and all this stuff and for me it's it's just it is what it is and you kind of just shrug your shoulder and say okay i'm gonna make it work with what i got exactly and so i think a lot of us like the people who are oppressed the people who are the low of the lowest like i i see it being hopeful because as for me like knowing that i don't have much doesn't really have me holding on too much and right now like like the verse in the bible where it's like it's harder for the rich person to go through the eye of the needle, the camel to go through it. You know, like it's, it's right now it's hard for those people who are the rich, who do put their trust in the president and are hoping for a good economic recovery. And just, it's, it's sickening to see how people really are blinded by their own selfish ambition and just their, their ignorance. And, um, and then now with, all this injustice being like a big light is being shown, you know, and, and people are asking, go inform yourself, like go and figure out your history of even just Portland. And uh, there is this fight back. Like, I don't want to, like a lot of white people are like, I don't want to feel like a bad person. I don't want to be told that I'm, I'm, I'm a bad person, but it's more like we've all kind of adapted into this country knowing that, yeah, there's injustice, but there's not much we can do, right? And so you just kind of, the people in power are going to be the people in power. And, 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 and it, that's what's hurtful because it should, that's not right. It shouldn't be like that. Um, do you should, feel that changing? It is changing in a way because now that, like, there, I know a lot of white people because a lot of my friends are white and they're, they're now being shown this and they're like, what? Like, I didn't even know about like how many black people are in prisons and how like the police has been like the police really does target black people in a way because they have prejudice and it's like people are, are upset because you're told the police is supposed to be there to protect you and help you and to really be aware of the ways that sure they've been protecting the white people but they haven't they, they act on their prejudices and that reinforces that racism and 
keeps people down. And, and that, that's, that, I think all that awareness is, it, it is hopeful because at least my white friends, they're like, wow, I, I didn't know, you know? And, and it's now the whole talk of white privilege is a thing, which it's a good thing. Like, I feel like the white people who are racist are saying, I don't want to be told about white privilege, you know? But it's like, no, like learn about it and just understand that you being white has given you a privilege and has given you, and has given you a life that is so different than other people. And that that's, doesn't mean that like, you're a horrible person, but now that you are aware, what are you gonna do about it? And I think that's the question we're all asking, like how do we move forward from right. this? And it's, there's hope because now that the white people that now are aware of their privilege has blinded, me, blinded them, like now that they're aware, they're like, okay, what do I do? Do you think that this moment is being received differently because of that, like awakening to privilege? Or do you think that people still aren't awake to their privilege? They're now becoming awake to their privilege. Like I, like that wasn't a thing. White privilege never even heard that. Like I personally have never even heard that term. And it wasn't until my, like my friends were like, yeah, I had to go on Google and look up what does white privilege mean? And there's mm -hmm. my, I think her, it's a doctor like Maya something that uh, she goes on and like, has written a book called white mm -hmm. privilege. And, it, right now it's like the number one bestseller on Amazon and it's out of stock, but there's also a Ted talk that she's done. And it's, it is crazy to know that like people have been talking about this and isn't to now that mm -hmm. finally it's gone viral and people now are aware of it. And it's, it's good thing. Like you sh I mean, yeah, I'm mad at the fact that all now all of a sudden people are awake when people have been fighting for justice in, in these areas but we have to be optimistic and, and it is what it is. Like you, you, this is where we're at as a country. And now it's more about the questions of how is it that we're going to move forward? Like, what are the steps that we need to take? Uh, and that means as uh, for me, as a Latina woman, like how do I become an ally? How do I ensure that even my voice gets heard? Like this has given me courage to know that, you know what, why are we putting up with this? Why are we okay? Why are we accepting a system? like this there, there needs to be that pushback and then now it's it's kind of frustrating because i am feeling that conflict um it's evidently like you you know like people are confronting their racist parents and trying to have those conversations with them and it's hard it really is hard because it's hard to realize that even for me like someone that i love so dearly like a really good friend like he isn't aware of his white privilege and he doesn't really want to be aware of his white privilege kind of thing and and it's easy to turn turn the eye and be like, well, I'm fine, or I think I'm a good person. I just want to carry on with my life again. When really it's like, if you don't start caring, this only is going to get worse and it's going to continue on. And I think I really want to see more people actually take ownership and, and start figuring out different ways of fixing the issue. And what's also frustrating is that our president is disgusting. You know, like our president is literally a horrible human that is perpetuating this, mm. this this hate and this division and the things that are coming out of his mouth. I'm just like, how like how are people okay with what he's saying? And and it's and what's worse is to know literal like to literally know people who who do believe in what he's saying. And and it, I think that's where we're all at. Like it's just knowing that people are just so blinded and it's just frustrating because it's like I'm just gonna right. I'm just gonna break in because I want to give Twix a chance to say something. Thank you, Kim. Though, thank you. Um, Twix, you're not a man who offers a lot until you're asked. So I'm gonna ask you straight. This whole COVID um, time and now and now this huge re eruption of the Black Lives Matter movement, we're all feeling a, a sense of like great change. I think a lot of us feeling great change in ourselves. And I wanted to know: Are you feeling a change in your in your life in yourself? or are you seeing a change around you like what's what's it like for you um yeah i would say for me right now um i'm seeing a change or more so just like on social media and in person um one with like when i when i'm out in public i'm seeing a lot more white people that are speaking and it's like it is one weird because like it's not something that would usually happen being out in public and then uh 
Two, just seeing like white people accept the privilege that they have. And I feel like that's the biggest change is, is accepting the faults or not the faults, but just the privilege that they have. Cause it's like us being black in America, we've been doing and going through this forever. So the fact that it's taken some people longer to get what we're going through, you know, it's just like, um, this is the first part that's like going to take, take us on a train, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, pretty much where I'm at. Have you felt a change in your own trajectory, you know, through this situation and through this time? I think it's, it's, it's opened me up. I think it's changed me. Like it's changed my vision a little bit, just opened up to not only just my life, but just everyone in a whole. Cause I mean, we're all going through the same thing, but it's like different to see other people's stories. It's eye opening to see everybody, what they're going through. So I had a, I had a friend, like I really thought that they were quite woke. And I realized there'd been a lot of acting going on because they know that I do this PVPDX thing and that I'm interested in these things and I'm always sending them films about stuff. And, you know, I, I always got this kind of like reasonably positive kind of engaged response from them. So I always kind of thought they were really woke. And then the other day they admitted to me that this most recent death was the first time they actually believed that there was no wrongdoing on the behalf of the black person. The first time they thought to themselves like, oh, that dude did not deserve to die. Like there's always been a question in their mind, which is so horrifying to me. I was shocked. Question. Like, I don't know, just the, just the fact that we, they, I don't know, just we put it in our minds like, well, he had to have been doing something. Like that right there, just that alone. Like you see the proof. Just we know what's wrong and what's right. Like it's so, it's not, it's so simple. It's not hard. That's what happens when you're dehumanized. That's what happens when you're not viewed as, as you know, Black Lives Matter. You don't matter. So it's just like, and that's the thing. Like, privilege allows you to be blinded to what else matters outside of yourself. You know. So I mean, a lot of the time, you're always going to be like, oh, well, the, the color of his skin. Of course, he's guilty. You know what I'm saying? You're always going to find a way to find the other person guilty. You know, especially if they're black. And that's if there's a white time. person that do the same thing, of course you're going to find some way to, uh, you know, find empathy for them at that point. You know, it's just the fact that our lives in America never matter. Go ahead, Yonder. So, I just want to talk basically about um, the fact, I, I get that everybody's talking about hope, and that's great and all. But I just want to make it very clear that for Black America, hope is a luxury that we cannot afford. You know, and the reason why I say that is because while white America is sitting around and is shocked at the fact that you're shocked, it's like puzzling to me. Like, it, it, it pisses me off. It, it pisses me off because I'm like, that's not on message. That's how we should stray off of message. The problem in America is accountability. Black people don't have a message of hate. We don't have a message of vitriol. We don't have a message of violence. You saw what happened when we voted a black man into the office. That's point blank. Right then, the social stigma should have changed. And, and, and should have, it should have changed, but it didn't. It got worse. And people leaned in. And now for me, I'm not concerned with white outrage. I'm not concerned with the fact that now you're getting it. Like, I can give less than a damn. People have been telling you this for shy of a century, not just the past 10 years, shy of a century. We've been working on Martin's dream for shy of a century. That's 100 years. Like, that's, we just got out of segregation. So for me, I am numb to that. That's the only reason why I'm called to action. For me, per personally, I see, I am, I'm so proud of my white friends, my white brothers who are, who are, searching digging deep down in your soul for your voice i am proud of you for that like truthfully i support you in that endeavor but i think it's a lot of people out here who just don't like the government period and they will hijack our message just for that kind of you know result they don't care who it is you know uh like i was telling taya and keevan and them a couple of days ago you know we we said if we ever got arrested by uh the cops in a protest and they asked us, what, what, what is your name? We would say George Floyd. Or we would say Breonna Taylor. We wouldn't give them our information. Simply because that could have been any of us. And black people understand that I'm a George Floyd. 
that she's a Breonna Taylor. You know what I'm trying to say? But white people don't see that. They see, oh my God, a black man has been killed. And that is the dysfunction. That is toxic. You need to see, oh shit, an American has been killed. Why are cops treating any living, breathing human like that? You know, and then on top of that, true enough, we need to dissect the real problem when it comes to how we are... Uh, what is civility in America? Even at the federal level, what is civility? That is that is the conversation as a black man, I'm trying to uh, get my white counterparts to think critically. We never told y'all, and I'm not talking to you, Sebastian, or you, and I'm not, I'm just saying in general, you we never told to white people. <laughs> yeah, we never told white people to get out there and loot and burn shit down. We said, if you do not listen to us, something is going to get burned down. We didn't tell you to, to act, you know what I'm trying to say? It's so crazy to me. It is really crazy to me that for the same people that tell us to stop all of this destruction, all we're saying is have the conversation amongst yourselves. Mm -hmm. We're tired of studying shit. You know what I'm trying to say? If you could give out a stimulus check, you can give out reparations. And I'll say it again. That's just what it is. Fuck all of this. Oh, my white friends don't know and they need to discover their privilege. That's on y'all. You know, that's a luxury we do not have as black men. I, that is not my struggle. That's not my fight. You know what time it is. But now as leaders we need to critically think okay who actually want to be on our team and now that you want to be on our time on our team how do we equip you with the tools to combat your white counterparts when they spit this vitriol and hate and i think that's what white people are looking for from us they they're 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 surprised that we don't we don't have an emotional response because we've been dying for 400 years yeah. this is nothing new i'm glad y'all are figuring it out but if you want to have a conversation with me I am trying to give you the tools to make it better. Like, for example, people will, will, will tear the news down and the media down. We have public officials who are standing up on the podium in front of the press saying that systemic racism doesn't exist. Like, people that are pushing the button, signing off bills, are saying that this stuff don't exist. Those are the people, I keep saying, okay, Donald Trump is a problem. Yes, Kim, I get what you're saying, Donald Trump is a problem. But he is just a face. And his rhetoric has yeah. exacerbated the flames of division. But the real, it, once we handle him, while we're in the middle of doing that, we need to work on Mr. Mitch McConnell and the whole Senate. You know what I'm trying to say? The House of Representatives, systemic change. And it has to be done on all fronts, not just, oh, sitting around and, oh, my white friend, do you get it now? No, because they can get it. But if they don't give a damn, if they don't realize that it's not their history, that it's their history too, they won't care. If they don't understand that it's going to affect their kids, that one day they're going to have a, a white son or a white daughter who's going to like a black guy or a black girl. And then you got these mixed kids running around wondering why is my granddaddy a Nazi and my, uh, and my other dad is a civil rights leader. It's too much. You know, like that's the conversations we need to be having. I don't, I can care less about how y'all feel about us. White people have not done humankind the, the best service in Can America. I'm not talking about globally. I'm talking about America. It ain't been cool over here. Can I ask you, I, actually, that thing about reparations that blows my mind because it's like, there's always like, how would we possibly afford reparations? How could we possibly do that? And then suddenly like, oh, here's billions of dollars we just invented. Like, we didn't have problems to needed fixing before. Like, no. yeah, it's unbelievable. You know, Sebastian, you know what black people require from white people? Black people require you to give us the tools to actually make it in a capitalistic economy. We are Americans too. And it is our, our right as American citizens to participate in the, in the capitalistic market. market. We have the right to attain money to drive the economy. And sadly enough, only in our economies, we don't have that knowledge. We don't have the connection. It's a trial and error. We always have to get with some white dude just so that we can be successful. Not for what you know before the cloud. And that's sad. Mm -hmm. That is the systemic change. You want to you wanna ask us, like, how can you help? It's that kind of shit. Like, mm -hmm. actually, like, allow me to live in the neighborhood and, and tell your neighbors, if I'm going to move into your neighborhood, tell all your neighbors that a black man is moving over here. Y'all already got homeowners associations. Let everybody know. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you a question specifically? I'm mm -hmm. just interested in what you think about this because um, I picked up a vibe in what you were saying of this feeling of, like, of respecting and being pleased that the white people are out there and involved and finding their voice. Um, how much of this, of these big movements, um, like defunding the police, things like that, things that are getting a lot of attention, how much are they being driven by the black voice and how much do you think they are just a, like, as you said, like anti-governmental or anti, you know, like anti-system rather than anti-systemic racism. Like how I do think, you think? 
I think when it comes to the black agenda, when I think when it comes to a progressive movement, I think that a lot of our leaders like Tamika Mallory, uh, Simone Sanders, Angela Rye, Don Lemon, a lot of these voices, they are now working overtime to, uh, to make very clear what defunding the police means. You know, this is my thing. If you look at the progressive black movement, Everything that we have put on the table has, has a solution. We have a problem and we have a solution. We understand that in our, in our government society, there are three ways that you, can, uh, that you can put a check on power when it comes to our local police. You can disband the police department, reform it, and defund it, right? And when you say defund, that does not mean disband. That means take the monies that have been used to militarize our police and put them in other agencies. Even if, like, I was just watching somebody today and they said, even if there was junior cops out here who were specialized in mental health and drug abuse, the cops have been used as customer service for white folk. Like, that is the truth. And I think when you talk about that as a, as a black leader, that is now what we have been charged to do because it is anti-government, anything that the black agenda, put, and I say 100% because I think that anything that we push out, anti-government agencies, people who go to school to twist up language and law will do anything to waste time. That's why they say, oh, to Bernie Sanders, for example, a guy who said, in Vermont, we did all this bullshit in Vermont, bro. If that was the case, half this shit would be free already. You want to talk about reparations for black people, but you're, you, people are not realizing that you're saying studying it. A study could take another 40 years. And they think that we're internalizing that when no, not only are we trying to be clear and, and make, make the statement, clear, but we're also out here fighting for our lives with nine to five jobs. This is, you know us, Sebastian, everybody in this collective has a job and we work. You know, we work and we bust our ass just to be in this space, having this kind of conversation and, and push, push our dreams. We don't want to work for anybody else. We want to have the American dream like other people. So with that kind of stuff, I do think that it is a black thing. It is black people that have came up with said idea. You know? So Kim said, um, we have to concentrate on what we're going to do next. Um, I appreciate also that there's a lot of people out in the streets and there's a lot of people making a noise about it but i have a deep feeling and you know you probably all know this anyway that the solution in america has to come from a marginalized people group it's biblical it's historical it's like the the oppressive emp forces of empire aren't going to turn around one day and go like oh you know what hmm i just give all this away because that just doesn't happen right so, so I really feel like God moves through, uh, you know, voices and leaders from marginalized communities to if there's any chance of redemption for this country, which sometimes I find it hard to have faith that, that, that there is. But this means that this solution is not going to come from these white people marching. I mean, does anyone, does anyone else disagree with that? I was saying that I agree because a lot of People are just there. They're like, okay, I, I get it. This is important. I'm here. And then they're like, okay, great. You're there. But it's yourself. like, how do you... It's, it's, how do you, for a lot of, it's just a start. It's just a start of conversation. It started. It does. But a lot of people... I'm supposed to fix it. Yeah. True. But like, where are the practical steps that if you are right, Sebastian, that the marginalized communities need to take in order to help the system because you're right leaders aren't just gonna say oh, okay here what do you want you know it's I, i'm one. not sure of how that like it is necessary. It is necessary. Just like Michael the, the the old 75 year old dude who got pushed down is necessary because if white people are out there and the police are still doing this shit, it goes to show it could be any of us. We don't want to live in a totalitarian government. That's what I'm saying. You're absolutely right, Sebastian. Marginalized communities are typically charged with the calling to stand up. But we need to understand this is, this is to me, this is, I'm, I care about the plight of America because I've always been taught that even as a black man, I could do it. I felt like I still feel that way. And my thing is our constitution is a living, breathing document. Laws can be changed. It's how bad do you want it? You know, th that, and that's what we can't be, the grassroots movement needs to, it's necessary, it's necessary. 
Because just last week, Donald Trump was in a bunker. And he understand it could get real primal out here. Okay? Like, it's necessary. It should, like homie said at the protest, protest does not, uh, a, a change does not uh, uh, end with a protest. It begins with one. Yeah. We need this uprising in America so people can start. Right, this, haven't you noticed in the last two weeks, even the level of discourse in our country has been has, has gone through the roof? We're having more intelligent conversations that we've had in the last two weeks than we've had about the Mueller report, than we've had about Russian inclusion. You know like all of this stuff, like conspiracy theories, we are having a true American conversation. Dissent is okay to disagree. I don't care if you vote for Donald Trump. Dissent, please don't. But the sin, you know, it's okay. It's okay to have a difference of opinion. But we're seeing, we're seeing what is happening. Our, our, the fabric of our democracy is changing. Our institutions, the vitality of our institutions are dwindling. That is a problem. Oh, yeah. Tay, I want to ask you to speak up. I, I, I want to hear your, your view on, on this kind of issue of, you know, what is the next action step? And is it going to be something that we are asking allies to, to engage in? Or is it going to be something that's going to be an uprising from, from within your community? Like, what are your feelings about that? Uh, all right, so I'm going to start with uh, my community. Um, togetherness and unity is something that's always lacked um, within the black community. We've always been separated. Um, segregation, um, I feel like, <laughs> yeah, we... Yeah, it was black and it was white, but at least the black community was together. You know, at least the dollar was staying in the black community. Um, I just spoke to my mom earlier today. My cousin's been making Black Lives Matter shirts, but he's taking it, taking that business to top to bottom. That's not the black community. Our, our dollar never stays in our community. Our dollar, literally, we could have a dollar in our community, and that could be spent in, in a whole different community so quick. And that's where I think, like, if, if we're talking about a capitalist, like, America, like, why aren't we spending with our folks? Why are, why are, why are the fact, why is it the fact that, you know, uh, we, there's a Nike that's so here, but the faces of Nike are the athletes. And what are the, the athletes? They're black, right? So it's just the fact that, like, our culture is what improves so many other cultures. But why can't we come together and improve our own culture? You know what I'm saying? So that's where I think definitely, like the black community, we have some work to do. And I feel like here in Portland, we definitely have some momentum. I would say that. Um, there's events. I have seen black people trying to come together. We do have an event that we're gonna be a part of in Juneteenth on, on the 19th. But um, outside of that, allies, definitely. I definitely think the allies have, have a, a, a play in this. I think we all have a play in this. Like we all have a part to play, and it's just like white folks have the voice. Like you know, if we're talking about like where our country is and where it's been, like yeah, you know, and we're not able to change their minds, but at the same time, I feel like it's up to us to come together and and prove that we are a lot more than what we are, you know, and. Like I said, it's just, it comes within, it comes in within. I hear in what you're saying, something that it concerns me a lot all the time. And that is the idea of like the black identity, the black image, as you say, like Nike's this huge, massive, successful, and there's a few black people giving their image to that. Mm -hmm. and, and they're also incredibly wealthy. But there right. isn't, but there isn't this, there isn't this kind of like, as you say, like this, this exchange within the black community where black people are supporting each other and black businesses are being supported by black people and white people, you know, allies and stuff. But in the end of the day, like this commodification of the black image, it's even like in the nonprofit world. And it's something that like I deal with. That's basically where my thoughts are always like in struggle because, you know, you know, a lot of white organizations, they also use the black image to, to fund like middle class salaries for you know in this kind of whole realm and industry of people who are helping like this black lives matter movement as you say like with the where people are getting their teaching people are still aren't engaging in that thought process like do you think there's a time when black people have to refuse to give their image do you think that's going to be part of this revolution I'm not going on so. right now. i definitely believe so and that's why i said i feel like there is momentum because every day I see a list 
a, a growing list. Oh, uh, this company is supporting this, you know, uh, the Trump administration. You know, and I, I do feel like there's a lot of conversation within our community saying like, you know, we're not supposed to support these, these, these companies. And I think that's something that has to constantly go on and on and on, you know, because they're not for us. You know, like even with these foreign, you know, these foreign uh, clothing brands and stuff like that, I've always like, it just never fathomed in my mind, like why these rappers love to like sport all this stuff that's not even from here. And you don't even know their motives. You don't even know if they're for us, you know? So it's just like, definitely. I think the conversation, you know, with our, in our community is happening. But it's about like constantly, you know, we have to be consistent with it. We have to continue. I definitely think we got to strip our faces from these places. People need to take responsibility with the tools that they've been given and the resources that they have and to ensure that their, their intentions are good. But like we need to see action behind just those good intentions. And social media, like right now, like this past week, I've, I've been seeing a list of of helpful like things that people are making like where you can go to or like the, where the, like the black owned uh companies here or the the coffee shops to go to that that help support directly these communities and people want to know so they can be con conscious and can choose to go specific places because they want to support and show support in, in what where their money is going to go to so that's been helpful and encouraging to see now that people are presenting that information it's just hopefully for me, it's like, hopefully this isn't just a trend. Like this has to continue. Like at, at one of the protests that I went to, they were like, hey guys, the NBA is gonna start up again soon and you guys are not gonna watch it, right? Cause it's a just, it's a distraction from this movement. And a lot of you were like, yeah, we're not gonna watch it. <laughs> um, and, I, and I think it's just to be aware that in order for change to happen, you have to be fighting for that. You have to in, ensure that you and your community, you and your family, are a part of that movement with your actions, not just a nice tweet or, or a nice post or repost. Like, okay, you're educating yourself, now go and show that in action. Yeah, That's about. super interesting, and I don't want to keep, keep this going all night because I know you guys have been, you're busy and you've been generous for your time. But, um, that's super interesting because like that brings up the NFL too. Maybe one of you can have a little comment on that because we, <laughs> you know, the NBA, like I don't think any of us want to see that not proceed. There's, there's probably, there's deep love, right? But, but there is now, is there, you know, is it, is it their responsibility to, to be a platform for this social change if they oh, want yeah. to exist? Go ahead. I said, hell yeah. All them black athletes. That's, that's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I right, that. right, that's, that's our closing remark. What you got? Oh, my closing remark? Yeah, to be honest, I don't know. I just been all over the place with all this, and you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm right here. Like, I want to start, you know, with all that hope and stuff talk. Like, I, exactly what DeAndre was saying. Like, that's how I feel. Um, like, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to, uh, like, I don't care. I'm at a point where, like, I don't care. And I'm trying to not get so – trying to stay focused and, and think of more of the practical ways that we can uh, work on to fix, you know, some of these issues instead of just uh, putting up that wall and saying, you know what, I'm not going to uh, talk to these people no more. I'm not going to try to uh, get them to understand uh, – you know, I was, you know, dropping a lot of F-bombs and shit. Like, you know, I'd rather just say that than, than to continue talking, trying not to think so negative about some of these things and more positive and putting all that energy into the practical things that we can be doing instead of just, like, putting up that wall and dropping all these F-bombs and saying, mm -hmm. you know, fuck that other side instead of trying to be like that, uh, thinking about the ways that we could actually – work towards what we try to work towards and i don't think together. i don't think being like that all the time doesn't doesn't help so i think that what i'm hearing in it in what you're saying jc though is also for those people who don't want to engage like for the person that maybe you were saying you've been in this last couple of years um 
having give an empathy for that like it's exhausting and it's like you it's it's stuff that we've been saying so long like don't expect every black person to suddenly like give you an award because you finally realize that the police are killing black people do you know what i mean i kind of even though you're asking to like you're saying you're going to move towards something more positive i think that what you're also saying is that 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 has you've this negative attitude has come from a feeling of like just frustration and i and i, and I think that's okay to say that do you know what i mean yeah, um, it, it comes from that, uh, just feeling like, you know, I, I look back at a lot of things I was taught growing up, uh, a lot of things I just accepted about this, about life, and I'm looking back at a lot of those things, and it's like, I sh it shouldn't have even been like that. I shouldn't have to be taught some of these things to, you know, for my parents to feel, you know, uh, that I'm safe. I, I shouldn't have to learn some of these Things. It just shouldn't be like that. And that's what it, it's got me to this point to where, like, you know, a lot of people are waking up, but a lot of people have been woke up to this stuff, like, you know, like, and so it's built up a lot of, you know, this anger. And I'm trying to use that the right way, is what I'm saying. Thanks, JC. Because would Greg give us his impressions for what's going on? Uh, I think it's cool that uh, everything's becoming something uh that for people to want to talk about you know i think uh it's most important that people are actually educating themselves like i was telling some of my coworkers that you know it's cool that you guys donate and all that and some people have their lane as far as how to really go about the protest and all that but the truly most important thing is actually understanding what is going on what makes this systematic and yeah, that's, that's the best way we're gonna make some changes. Thanks, Greg, appreciate that. Um, DeAndre, you wanna give us your, your summation? My final message is I'm a black man. I create, love, and serve. And um, I want, if I have any, any, anything to say to white America, specifically the powers that be, be intentional about the change that you want to make. Be very intentional about it. Make change on purpose. Not by osmosis, on purpose. Thank you. Awesome. Twix? All right. Um, I would just say to the people that's going to tune in is that remember that we are the change and that we have never seen change. So don't, like, it, it looks... It's, it's, it's not going to look like the way you think it's going to look like. It all starts now, literally. If, you, if you're sharing a post on Instagram, that's the change. If you are making people and showing people what it looks like, and if you are, if you are just being a part of the change, then you are the change and we are the change. That's what I'm saying is, like, we need to um, keep going. I wouldn't, like, the, the boycott, the bus boycott lasted a whole year. So it's, like, it's not going to happen tomorrow it's not going to happen next week we just got to keep going it's not it's, this is not a, a social media trend that who can see who can get the best post who can make the best whatever you know it's just like this is this is what's going on in, in america and this is what we have to it's crazy that we're still doing this i mean the stuff that we learn in high school and the textbooks isn't is not affecting us in any way right now so it's like we need to really think about what it is that we want to see and what it is that we're doing because i mean there's a lot of people that are still not sure what they can do to help to get the message out there but i would just say remember that we are the change and that don't stop because it's not yeah it's not i don't know it's not gonna i don't know it's like it's just gonna happen that's all i gotta say thanks twix Let's let's uh, let's un unmute you guys so we can you can applaud like audibly. <laughs> um, did we get you? <laughs> yeah, you got me. You got me. You got me. You got me. That boy was speaking. Oh, uh, so I'm getting confused here with my buttons a bit. I'm sorry. I'm not too great at this hosting thing. So what, what's your final thought for us, people? I mean, I'm taking in this conversation and what I'm pulling out of it is that 
where um, it's just the dialogue is being had. Like people are actually speaking, and I have to like remind myself that you can't you can't get exhausted. Like this is this is a hot time. This is a hot time, and like yeah, we're on the spot again, but we, we got to step up. Yeah. And so like, I'm I'm more of like stepping into this role. Like like kind of DeAndre kind of said like we kind of been pushed into the call uh, and we just, we, we have to accept it, especially in, in a place like this <clears throat> where, where our black representation is not, it's very, it's very few of us here. It's not, it's not big. So, so I have to like step up and like really be, be a voice and own that voice. And so like, that's what I'm learning out of this. That's what I'm taking out of this. And um, I'm just accepting the call. And we need to come together to during this like hot moment like we need to find each other and come together and start brainstorming together and yeah so that's what i'm saying i'm gonna do my part and i'm just hoping everybody do their part yeah i don't know if i got everyone's final thought but i want to see if anyone wants to just talk to this now because um and this will be the last thing we talk about i think it's appropriate all this attention like this part of part of life is being able to kind of like switch off from things and like black America doesn't get to switch off to racism, but you do get to like hang out and party and make music and do all these social things, have eat food. And all that is limited right now within the COVID situation, you know? And I just want you guys to like, if anyone's got any advice for anyone who's like, might be struggling with like the mental health side of things. Cause it, you know, just the, the constant news cycle, the constant, like, like the rebroadcasting of all these horrific images and stuff. Like, has anyone got any advice for people who might be um, feeling the burn? DeAndre, <laughs> my DeAndre. advice is um, to really invest in your family. Even if you have to work on creating one for yourself, um, I like to tell the collective all the time that I, I like to see myself as a collector of people, you know, and I think that during this time, it has really allowed everybody to really um, dial into your sphere of influence, the people around you, and really like re like re like reinvigorate those connections. You know, talk about those connections, strengthen those connections. I think the most thing that could heal anybody during a time like this is real human connection, and that doesn't mean like being with each other face to face. But it does mean corresponding, creating a level of rapport with each other. You know. During this time, you know, I'm a school teacher, and so I teach kids virtually, and I'm finding that most of my children are not, they're, what they need out of a teacher now is a connection. I care about you. I see you. And I think if you can figure out a way to invite more of that into your life as well, you'll be able to get through this. You know, I mean, pandemics, all of this stuff happens all the time, but what makes our time good is is the time that we spend with one another. We, just because of COVID alone, the collective has been able to get in the studio and really plan things out and make our lives the way that we want it to be. And because we know that we have a system, you know, our jobs or whatever that holds us financially so that we, we have this free time. I mean, this should really be a brain, a brain switch in the sense that we don't have to trade our physical time for, for money. Like our intellect and our brains is, can drive the economy. And what gives us comfort is being around each other, seeing a smile, a text message, constantly, you know, checking in with one another. That Don't let three days go by and you haven't spoken to anybody. Don't try to have dinner over the FaceTime. You know, don't do shit like that alone, you know? That, that's awesome, Jordan. Thank you. Anyone else want I, anyone else before before I say goodbye? Anyone else got anything else to add on that or anything else? Check up on your strong friends. Yes, you know uh, everybody needs love, and you know um, it's just pitching back on what DeAndre said. It's just find different ways to show love, get in touch with the, with the things that you love to do, yeah. uh, and just really show that self love. You know. And uh, uh, your environment will definitely, you know, pick you up when you do that as well. When you say you're strong friends, do you mean that the people that you don't necessarily imagine are struggling 
Because okay. they're, they're the strong ones. They got, yeah, they're the strong ones. You know, they put up that front, and, you know, they always play superhero, you know, yeah. the ones that they pick everybody else up. Damn, that is so beautiful. I'm just going to take that with me. And do that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else got any, any other gems before we, before we clock out? I wanted to say thank you so much for answering this call to get online. I don't take it for granted. I, I love you all dearly and I'm super just, I just love watching what you guys are creating. Um, uh, when I post this, I'm going to put, put, put links up to, to the Smooth Collective website so people can get your, your clothes and start shopping as they should with a black business. Um, JC's about to launch something soon. Uh, we're about, yeah, he, with with the with the your production company Bank. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a, your shout out. Smooth Collective, Twix, man, out in the streets, still making films under difficult circumstances. I want to thank you all for being here and chatting and let me hear your thoughts and um, hopefully some other people will check this out and and uh, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yeah, yeah. We out this piece. Hey. <laughs>